How are we doing, folks? Listen, I wanted to go through this quick overview, which we're calling business development to financial freedom. And now this is this overview. Just I was inspired this morning to cover this. So I just want to shoot from my heart um, to everybody. This is for people. Maybe you just got out of high school all the way up to you're already retired, but you're not where you want to be financially. And you've got a hunger or a desire to either improve your retirement or set yourself up so you don't have to have to go get, get to a job every day. Maybe you're you're looking for a career. Uh, whatever it is, this is a business development business, meaning David Allen Capital will pay you very well if you generate business, right? It's just like any, if you're a mortgage broker, you have to generate business. If you're a real estate agent, you have to generate business, right? If you're an engineer, you have to be able to go there and generate good work or they don't want you in your as, as an employee, right? So business development is nothing more than delivering value to the marketplace. So I'm going to talk to you about how you can take the David Allen Capital business, put business development hat on, wear your DAC business development hat, and get out there and make some great things happen. It really is fun, and it's not difficult, all right? But some people are targeting the wrong markets, and some people are doing things hoping to generate business, but not guaranteeing that they'll generate business. There's, there's an old uh, rule that says sowing and reaping. It's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a principle. If you reap what you sow, if you only sow certain things, meaning you only plant certain seeds, you're only going to get certain results. But if you plant other seeds, you're going to get results, right? If you plant a peach uh, seed, you, you may get a peach tree. You certainly won't get a grapevine. You're going to get a peach tree or nothing at all, right? And so we want to give you the mindset uh, and a real quick overview on how you can take your desire to do business development and make it successful with DAC. All right. Uh, so this is for anyone who's high school student all the way retiree looking to generate business. Now, when it comes to business development, there's a couple things. It starts with your beliefs. We say this over and over, make sure you understand the beliefs of our revenue-based capital. We're talking about business funding this. You can do the same thing for payment processing or customer finance. You can apply the same principles that I'm going to cover with you. But beliefs about business funding, you know, we believe business owners are rock stars. They're the front line of capitalism. They've got great ideas that can expand. Um, those ideas cost money generally. Working capital is very hard for a business owner to get. Most banks decline businesses. 80% of the businesses out there cannot get approved for uh, traditional business funding. So what do they do? They've got revenue today. If they've got revenue today and they're doing sales today, we can help them many times, right? The more revenue they're doing, the more solid their business is, the more we can help them. So revenue-based capital becomes one of the only sources of capital for a lot of these folks, right? And then um, of all the providers out there, there's dozens of them. We represent all the best ones. So one application through us, one soft FICO score, we go find them the best offer in a day, sometimes two days, and deliver that best offer for them. And many different providers know that we represent so many, they give us their best offer. So it's really taking care of the customer. When you send them through our portal, they're going to get the best possible offers, which is significant, and you can get paid. All right. So even if they know about revenue-based capital, they probably don't know about us as like a clearinghouse to find all the best offers. Right. So this is where you come in. You can become their funding superstar once you have the beliefs. Then you need to understand the qualifications of our funding. Pull the, pull the quick reference sheet down. If you haven't already, make sure you understand there's eligibility requirements. When someone applies at our site, it goes into three different buckets. Right. Or four. One is declined because they're not eligible to apply. They're not doing enough current revenue. Right. Again, we base it on the revenue that they're doing today. That's their number one predictability that they'll continue doing revenue. And that becomes the security. These aren't loans most often. They're usually advances against the future revenue. So how predictable is that future revenue? Right. So they got to be doing at least a certain amount of revenue. The more they're doing, the more predictability that will continue. And then there's less risk to the person providing the advance. Right. The smaller the revenue, the more odds are that could stop high risk, higher to get approved, right? So understand the qualifications. Some are declined. Some go to our Giggle self-employed. Uh, that means they're doing less revenue or they've got a personal bank account. Giggle's our provider. Or they're doing a little bit more revenue and they have a business bank account. Then Biddy 
becomes our provider that they finish their application at, or they're doing at least 15,000 a month in revenue and they've got a business bank account, then Bank Breezy, Bigger Fundy retains that application. They complete the app. So all of those, they complete their application in one of those places, right? You know this, know the qualifications. Now, target audience. You know, I see, I, right, I'm looking out my back parking lot right now. There's a big black uh, asphalt parking lot and it's been raining. It's a bunch of puddles. And you know, Matt, right behind it, there's a pond, a little lake. And there's people fishing in that lake all the time. There's a bunch of bluegill in there and bass and some pike. So there's always people casting off the shore fishing. Imagine if all those people that are fishing over in the lake went and fished in the puddles in the parking lot. Same bait, same fishing reel, same casting technique, same everything. Are they going to catch any fish in the parking lot? No. Okay, now let's go to that same pond over there. Are they going to catch any tuna in that pond out back? No, they're going to catch bluegill, bass, maybe a pike, right? They're going to catch something small. It's a small pond, right? So what are they going to fish over there with? They're going to fish with, you know, bobbers and, and little worms. There's always little kids learning how to cast over there with their parents, right? That's who fishes in our local pond. You all have a park like this. You know what I'm talking about or you've seen this. But if you want to go catch tuna, where are you going? You're going in the ocean. You want to catch these 400 pound fish or however big they are, you're not going to find that here in this in this local pond. So your target audience, you determine what type of clients you're attracting in your business development simply by how you're approaching clients. Right. So I'm going to talk about how you can approach your target audience, which will be significant business development for you, significant income for you. All right. And so you're not fishing in the parking lot. That's what that's. Therefore, and we're going to talk about how to track your clients, follow up with them, and then develop teams. So when you're going out to get clients, if you know all the, the credentials already, business development is nothing more than bringing value to the marketplace. And there's many different ways. You know, when I was in college, I had a student discount card we created. You have probably see them now. A lot of people use them for fundraisers. But back then, it was real creative. And because little printed cards were brand new back then. So we, we printed this little card on the back. We put 10 little logos in with the deal. Buy one, get one free at McDonald's and buy one, get one free at Taco Bell. And, you know, front of the line privileges at this bar and front of the line privileges at that bar. Dollar pitcher nights at this bar, right? Free appetizer here. That was what the student discount and 20% off at the bookstore, right? So this was the student discount card. And I remember when it came time to sell it. So I built this. I had to go talk to all the business owners, get them to agree to give buy one, get one free every time they come in with this card, you know, not just once, but every time. And, and there's a lot of businesses in Ann Arbor. So I only needed 10, the right 10. And I, and I got those. Now it's time to develop business, though. Develop the product. The good thing here is you don't have to develop the product. Right? You don't have to develop the websites. You don't have to develop the brochures. You don't have to develop the, the idea. You don't have to go negotiate with all the funding partners. You don't have to negotiate with the underwriters to get them to approve a deal. You don't, have to get, you don't even have to talk to the client about the deal once they get it. Our internal team does that for you. But you do have to do the business development, right? You have to go out. So I had this student discount card done, and it was time to develop business. And I remember going, now what? So I ran an ad in the local newspaper. Because uh, I was in classes, so I ran an ad in the local newspaper. It was the Michigan Daily was called. I think I got four customers. I'm like, man, I thought people would be, back then there was no internet. I thought my mailbox would be stuffed with people wanting to order. I, I put a little coupon they cut out in the newspaper, and they filled out their form and, and got that student discount. And I had a real cool display ad talking about all the benefits. It was a great thing. I think I got four or five customers through the ads. And then I tried standing in front of the bookstore and I got a few customers that way. And then I tried uh, um, going to the bars when there was a long line because one of the things was front of the line privileges. And I'd say, hey, wait in line or buy this card for 20 bucks and go right to the front of the line right now. Plus buy one, get one free. Plus, so we're selling to the people in the line. Tried that. And then I tried um, uh, going door to door in the dorms and was kicked out of the dorms because you can't sell in the dorms. So then I had to go to the, the university and get permission because it was, I was a student and, hey, I'm in the business school and this is a great product for clients, for the, for the students. Can I please have permission to go sell? Well, not door to door, but we'll let you call them and we'll let you deliver in there. But you can't be knocking on doors. It's not safe. It scares people. That's fair. So they gave me permission to call. And so business development became advertising the paper. Tried it. Standing on corners. Tried it. Standing where there's a line. Tried it. Um, 
have recruited some other students to sell. That worked. People wanted part-time. Calling over the phone. All these methods were business development methods, right? They all worked. All of them worked, but I had to try them all. And what I found was the one that worked best for that was the telephone calling into the dorms. And I could call the dorms and, hey, have you heard of the student discount? Michigan U of M student discount card? You haven't heard of it? Oh, my goodness. You ever eat at McDonald's? It's buy one, get one free. You ever eat at Taco Bell? Buy one, get one free. And it just went through this spiel. I could still say it now. This was in 1990, right? And the point was I learned which one of those worked best. And then anytime someone became a student who loved the card, I'd say, hey, by the way, if you want to make some great part-time money, you can market these. I can give them to you on consignment for 10 bucks. You make 10 every one of these you sell. You're kidding. I'm in. The people who love the card, I could go get all kinds of customers. And we got 4,200 customers in 90 days. But I only got four from that newspaper ad. Some of you are only running social posts and you're wondering why you're not getting any $100,000 fundings or $50,000 fundings. Some of you, I sold a lot more of those student discount cards through the referral marketing of other students needing to make extra money than I did personally. And then I got to the point where I said, I'm going to train people how to market these cards more than I'm going to stand on the corner in front of the bookstore. Right. And so, but I was willing to try all the business development to find the ones I wanted to do and which ones I could teach. And so then I could teach those people, you've got business development things right here that some of you aren't doing all of them. If you want to really take business development and turn your DAC business into a financial freedom for you, there's a lot of, if you had $100,000 funding a month, you're making 7% because you'd have deck four, you'd be at seven points minimum and you'd be making what? 7,000 a month. Is that pretty good for retirement? Is that pretty good for just getting out of high school? Is that pretty good at any, just 100,000 a month? So now if you think, I got to figure out how to get $100,000 client a month, hmm, should I fish in the parking lot? Or should I fish where $100,000 a month revenue businesses exist? Because I can't get $100,000 monthly revenue if I'm talking to businesses who are only doing DoorDash and they're doing $5,000 in revenue only or $7,000. Now, if you want to get catch a bluegill, you can go to the pond. And if you want to take the time to clean it, you might get three ounces of fish to eat, right? But if you can do the same activity and learn how to cast the same way and put different bait on and go to the lake where the bigger fish are or go to the ocean where the bigger fish are, you might catch a tuna. From the same activity, the same cast, the same reel in, that you'll catch a bluegill out here, you can, you know, you won't catch as many, but when you do, you can eat for a week or a month. So business development is about you becoming a professional enough to meet, bring enough value where the businesses that are larger believe in you enough to say yes. When you first get started, you may only want to fish where DoorDash and Uber drivers are. There's nothing wrong with those individuals, but it's a lot easier for a lot of people to talk to a self-employed business owner about getting money to grow their business than it is to talk to a construction company who's been in business 12 years and you're brand new. I get it. It was, un it was awkward for me at first too, but now I have no issue talking because I've grown and matured in my business development of this business, right? You've got to grow and mature in your business development in DAC, and eventually you'll have no trouble attracting those clients. But if you're only relying on advertising, social and Google, et cetera, I do this today, you're going to get a lot of ineligible applications. I've had about 300 apps in the last um, six months that didn't even complete the app. They weren't eligible to apply. They shouldn't have even been applying, but I paid for those clicks. It's like that TV, that advertising I put in the Michigan Daily newspaper that it was so well done and we spent all the time and doing it, paid the money and developed it all, it looked so good. And we got four customers. Like, man, you could do all the right stuff here and you may get a customer or two, but that is not business development. That's advertising and promotion and hope. That's being an affiliate. Now, see me go, I want to do that. Well, you can do that if you become a social influencer. I get customers socially. I get customers who know I'm in business funding and know I've been doing this for five years, seven years, actually. They know I'm in. They know I'm serious. They come to me if they need funding. So when I put social posts up, 
they share them with their friends. Hey, my buddy's in business funding. I got a call from a guy to Texas just two days ago, said, hey, I got a friend, a professional baseball player. He's got a business. He's growing and he needs he needs some working capital to take it to the next level. I know you're in working capital. Great. I haven't talked to this guy in 15 years, but he's one of my Facebook friends and he referred me to another guy, right? Because he saw my social posts and he sees I post all the time here. But that's not what I count on for business development. If you want to count on business development, work, move your way up. Move your way up on this board here. Get comfortable doing the things you see up here. If you get comfortable doing the things you see up here, and by the way, you can do it through the telephone, text, call, or email. So I phone down here at the end, but really that is how you do some of these things. So text, email, and phone call your warm market, then local businesses, then chambers and associations, then be a social influencer and educator. Yeah, you can do some advertising. Talk to your local banks. And then what ideas do you have? I don't know. Try them. Just don't teach them until you prove they work. Try any idea you have. Try it. Right? I didn't know that standing at the scorekeeper's lounge, which is still in Ann Arbor, by the way, I didn't know by standing at scorekeeper's when there was a long line, I, I, I'd outsell standing at the bookstore with 20% off your books. 20% off your books for 20 bucks right here, or front of the line privileges for 20 bucks right here. The people at the bar were like, let's go. We'd sell four at a time. Let's go. This, These four right to the front. People are going, what are you doing? How's he going in front of me? They got the student discount card. What? How do I get one? We sold more that way. I didn't know it until we tried it. And so we would teach all those people that became agents of ours selling those cards. Hey, go stand at scorekeepers. Go stand at O'Sullivan's dollar pitcher night. Go stand there. And we, we go stand at McDonald's. You know, whatever you got to do, get the word out. But we try things first. Try away. Try. You're brilliant. You got great ideas. You got things. Your idea is business development, getting in front of businesses who have ideas, who need working capital. It's expensive if they don't have an idea and don't have a strategy. It's priceless if they do. Right? So, but if you're only advertising, you may get, well, I got 120 people started the app. I got 370 who started the app and didn't get funded. 500, whatever it is. It's not, we're, it's like fishing in the parking lot. I got a nibble. No, your lure drag on the parking lot ground. You thought you had a bite, but you didn't. It's not, they're not eligible to catch the lure. It's a, it's a weed in the parking lot. You're fishing in the parking lot. I got 700 people going to giggle. Yeah, well, good luck getting 10 of them to get funded, right? Because they're not eligible. These are just ads. Now, if you talk to a local business and you talk to an Uber driver and you go through the credentials and you let them know they're going to have to link their banks and you let them know they got to be doing 3,000 of just that business money, not counting their job, and they've got to be in business at least six months. And then they go, yeah, I want to apply. You're going to get a high approval and high acceptance rate. But if you're just running ads and getting 70 people to go click on it, okay, just know that you're going to get 70 emails saying app started and you're not going to get the second one of you're going to get app did not, client did not link banks more often than not. You may get some, uh, but don't think that you're going to catch a lot of big business development fishing in the local pond. It's okay to help. We, we want to offer that funding, but we want you as a businessman and businesswoman who's from high school to retirement trying to generate big revenue to focus on the $15,000 a month in revenue and up or more. Okay. So are you moving up this ladder here? Are you focused on these things? This is where you want to focus your business development. If you go, Dave, I don't want to do this. Imagine you're a real estate agent. And you don't want to let anyone know in your warm market, those are people who know you. You don't want to let any non-business owners know that you're a mortgage agent or a real estate agent. You don't want to let any people who were, need to buy a house know that you're a, uh, no one I know. I don't mind telling people I don't know. I don't mind advertising that I'm a real estate agent, but I don't want anyone to know I'm a real estate agent. You know what? You won't be a real estate agent next year because you can advertise all you want. Nobody deals with the ads. They don't. They call a sign of a house that's on there or they talk to a warm market friend and family. And so does our funding. They answer a telemarketer's call or they talk to a referral. Yeah, they'll go look online. They'll, they'll type in an advertising click online. And if you've got the right ad, great. But you know what's going to happen? You're going to pay per clicks. And I'm not saying don't do it. I do it every month. It pays for itself. But I'm willing to see 160 people click on it who don't apply. 
I realize I'm fishing in the pond and I may once in a while get a giant pike, but I'm probably just going to get a bunch of sunfish and a bunch of weeds too. I know that comes in the pond. If you don't want to deal with that, then don't fish there, right? If you only want people who are really doing 50000 a month in revenue or hundred, then fish where they are. What is it? It's types of businesses. But start with your warm market. Text, email, and call. You know, we've got our, uh, this is the Saturday training booklet. I printed it at my local printer, Super Saturday. This has got a lot of stuff. But finding and, and working your client funnel. It talks about what to do. Meet, greet, and inform at least five businesses a day. So warm market, get the word out. Text your non-business owners and your and phone call. And you see him. I was just at a barbecue the other day and um, someone's 50th birthday and was talking to him and talked to a couple people. And yeah, I'm in business funding and people I hadn't seen in a long time in business funding and we love helping business owners. So if they can't get out to the bank, I got their back. That's all. That's all that was said. I'm informing you're not going, hey, do you know anyone? Do you got anyone you want to send me to? You know, you don't need to do that. You just get the word out. It's okay to say, hey, and if you know any business owners, please pass my information on. But very, very passive informing. Not annoying informing, passive informing, educational informing. Yeah, banks are great, but they require collateral. I don't know if you know that. Yeah, a business owner can't get a business funding unless they put up their home or they own that business. Most business owners don't own or don't want to put up collateral. So, um, Banks don't approve over 80% of them, but we can get them approved if they're doing revenue. It's really cool. That's all they got to know. That's all they got to know if you inform them of that. So non-business owners and business owners, inform them. And then local businesses, your local market should know you are their business funding superstar. They're, you're their hero. You want to help take care of your town. You want to color it blue, as we say. Canvas is a customer. That just means when you're in there eating... Make sure you have your drop card and make sure you introduce, hey, can I meet the owner? I go out to dinner with my wife sometimes. I don't want to introduce myself to the owner. Other times I've got these cards and I put them in my pocket and I go in knowing before we leave, I'm going to say something to the owner or, or there's someone behind the counter or something. Because I'm a customer. I'm not selling. I'm not there selling. I'm informing. Hey, we love to help businesses. Your sushi restaurant's doing awesome. If you ever want to expand or grow and your bank's not the right source for you, we can be. Let me just leave you this card. If you can just give that to the owner, that'd be great. We love your restaurant. We're in here all the time. And I just would love to help you guys open a second one if you ever wanted to. Done. That is informing. All you're doing is informing. Like it says here, just inform, meet, greet, and inform. Just five business owners per day. And you do that over time. Follow up with all those in the process already. Check in with two to five business clients is already in your client funnel uh, via email, text, phone, or in person. If you just do this, you're going to end up having hundreds of business owners who know you're their funding person. And you're not reliant on this. You're reliant on this. Join your local chamber and association. We have a reimbursement. If you get, if you go out there and, and join a chamber and you get a funding, actually not a funding, but once you do 100000 in funding from that chamber, we give you up to $500 back to cover your chamber due. But Howard Looking just got that, had a $300,000 funding from an association. We gave her the 500 bucks. Her association cost 750. We gave her 500 of it. But she made, you know, 12 grand on the on the funding. So she's doing pretty good too. Um, social influencer. That's not just posting socially, but educating socially. Chantelle Roddy is an, exa an awesome example of this. And you can read about her on the, um, or watch her videos on the Agent of the Month interview. She talks about how to be a social influencer. By the way, Har Harlequin talks about how to use chambers and associations. So it's a great one to use. So yeah, use some advertising social, but I've done, I've got an ad at home that I took a full page ad out in my local paper in Milford. Um, I've got an office here where I've had the whole back window laminated with a big, beautiful sign. Uh, I thought about putting a $7,000 sign on the building out front. I didn't do it. Uh, I've got logos with my, uh, you know, with QR code on it on the front door now. Um, all that stuff. You know how many clients? One, my first week in business in 2017 when I opened this office just before COVID, I got one client, one so far from all this advertising for the newspaper. I put banners up at my high school. I've funded different things. I've funded t-shirts of one client. It was my very first week. And I learned later he was actually referred by a banker from the chamber. 
And he said, oh, yeah, I knew. I did have one other person call me who owns a gas station in town and said, hey, I saw your business when I was getting a coffee next door. I want to remodel my gas station. Can we talk? And I talked. He's like, yeah, no, I'm, I'm willing to put up collateral. I'm looking for longer, you know, 20-year term. And So literally none. All the advertising I've done, I've spent 50 grand on Facebook advertising, lost a ton of money. I've paid for lead companies. I've bought this. So I'm trying them all, trying them all. I got a friend who's in our space on his own. Uh, he does postcard marketing only. He doesn't do any of this. He does postcard marketing only. It's back to that old, um, you know, um, that's his market. So we've got postcard marketing coming, right? We've got that launching soon. And we've, I've never used it, but I'm going to invest heavily in it just based on what he's done and hopefully come to you with a model, um, you know, that says, hey, this works. And he, it's working for him. You know, and so I think it'll work. This this pays for itself for me and Google. But I've I've been on the phone with Google for probably 30 hours. And just in the last month, probably three hours saying, listen, I don't want 300 apps from people who aren't doing 15. I want I don't want them to even see the ad. How do I only get people who are doing 15,000 a month? My ad now says 15,000 a month minimum before anything else. And I still get apps who come in who are ineligible applying. So just know that going in. When people first get started, they think, oh, I got 20 people went to giggle for my advertising. That doesn't mean you're going to do any funding. Those are like nibbles in the parking lot. You're fishing in the parking lot and you got a nibble. No, it's a weed on the ground. It's not a tuna, right? So I'm not saying don't do it. Do it. Just know what you're getting involved in. There's going to be weeds. There's going to be a lot of false hits um, and there's not going to be any tuna there. Okay. Uh, the pond has got once in a while, you get a big pike and you could eat, you know, feed the whole family. But this is where we go for business development. The top here, if you're not willing to do these canvas as a customer, your local biz, and then expand local does not have to be your local geographic. I'm going to give one more thing here. Local is area. Yes. Okay. So that's like a map that's area. Um, yes. But over here, this could be Michigan. I live right here in Michigan, but maybe I've got an affinity for this place over here where I grew up along the Lake Michigan, and I want to help every business in South Haven. And I'm going to say, I'm going to make sure everyone in South, I'm going to drive out there and spend a weekend there and make sure every business in South Haven knows who I am and knows that if they ever need funding, I got their back because I grew up here. I love this town. And I go in and tell people that. So local isn't just where you live, although you need to do that, but local could be an industry type. Maybe you grew up in construction or you've, your dad or mom owned a construction company. You just know the, the pain of being a construction company. You want to help every one of them. Then going local is I'm going to help every construction company nationwide know who I am. And you do Google search for, you know, your town and you start reaching out to them. You don't know me directly, but if you send emails, just like our training teaches, you send private one-on-one -on -one emails with a private subject line. If you're calling people, you got to follow the TCPA laws. Make sure you're reading our telemarketing laws. You can't just pick up the phone and dial everyone you want and do predictive dialers. It's not legal. Uh, but you can call people who are advertising their number. And you can, if you drive by a truck and it's on the road uh, and you see Joe's painting, it's okay to say, hey, Joe, I just drove by you. Yeah, I'm just calling to introduce myself. I don't need my room painted right now, but... Just call and introduce myself because I love helping business owners like yours. And we hadn't met yet. I'm in business funding. So if ever you need help, man, I want you to know who I am. Would it be okay if I send you some information? How long have you been painting? Really? Cool. Do you guys have a, more than one crew? Really? What kind of houses do you paint? Outside, interior, exterior? Okay, cool. Well, heck, if I ever know anyone who needs painting, if I ever do, I know where to go. Appreciate it. Build a relationship. And you add them to your client relationship sheet. Add them to that sheet. And follow up with them, as it says in the building your client funnel. Okay. So hopefully this has helped. I just want to make sure. And by the way, if you had, I'll end with this. If you had um, a team doing this, let's say you're doing it. You've got client acquisition down. And let's say you're doing 100000 a month in funding. And you're making, just call it 7%. You're making 7000 a month, you personally. Okay, because you have the 6% amped up bonus plus uh, DAC 4, 30%. Okay, so you're really making 7.8%. Okay, because you're DAC 4. 
Okay? So, seven point eight percent. How do you get that? Six percent for amped up, plus thirty percent DAC for override revenue share. You get it on your own and your team, but just on your own. So that's seven point eight percent. You made seventy eight hundred dollars a month. Okay, uh, being in business development. You don't need to have 500 applications. You need a few good ones every month. And you, you just keep building relationships with, with that. And you become the funding pro. Now, if you've got this down, don't forget, as you build a team of other, this is you, you build a team of other agencies, this becomes a portfolio of yours of agencies that you have revenue sharing in. Right. And if you're amped up by getting one client a month, if you're amped up, you make 50 percent, 50 percent of all the people you personally enroll. Personal commissions. So if you help this person make five thousand, you're making twenty five hundred. You help this person make six thousand this month, you make three thousand. You help this person make $2,500 in personal commissions this month, you make $1,250. You help this person make $9,000 this month, you make $4,500. You see why I say focus on being in business development? Because if you can get good at business development, you're always amped up. You're always making great commission on your own supporting of clients and your position to be amped up making 50% of everyone who now is looking to you as their example. And you're saying, Joe, you're making 7,000 a month on your own clients? Yeah, I wanna make 7,000. Okay, well, you wanna be in business development. Don't be just in social advertising. Don't just be in, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna get mine, I'm gonna get mine. Yeah, nobody makes money talking that way. Uh, you're not gonna attract business owners tracking it. You may want to attract other people who wanna start a business and invest in a business and internally consume something, but you're not gonna build business development. If you wanna be in business development, go be a pro and go help people. Read our values, read our training book about what does it take to have the DAC culture, live it, do business development and watch what happens over time. You'll get to the point where you got a hundred thousand in funding a month, and you're making seventy eight hundred a month, or you got fifty thousand a month, and you're making thirty seven hundred dollars a month. Whatever it is, um, you you'll get there, thirty nine hundred. But the bottom line is, until you're an example, it's hard to ask these people to be an example. So you want to be in business development as well as find others who want to be in business development, not just affiliate marketing. Okay. If they're a good social educator, they'll do very well. But business development focused on the right people, like we talked about in this video. And you can see what this does. Plus, you get DAC overrides. So I'm only showing the 50% enroller bonus. Enroller bonus. You get overrides, too, in addition to that 50%. So, And this is only on the people you personally enroll. So imagine if your strategy was, one, be an example of business development. So this is your high school or retired. You want to, you want to turn it on, be a business example development of a hundred thousand in funding a month. Just set that as a goal. There's people who do a quarter million dollars a week, right? In our space. Some do it, have to do a million a week and do it. Um, but let's just say you're doing a hundred thousand a, a, a month in funded value. Okay. And that's number one. Well, you know, if you're a DAC four, you're making 7,800 a month on that personally. All right. Number two, um, team of personally enrolled, we'll call them biz dev, biz dev focused. Those are eyeballs. They're focused on business development, not just sign up 700 people, sign up 60 people, getting 50 people to fill out an application. Filling out applications is easy. That's not business development. Again, where are you fishing? So go back and watch the very beginning. And you got a team of this. And for every one that you can check, yep, duplicated, they've got the right focus and they're getting development themselves. For every one that you can help, you're making 50% of for life, for life on their personal income. 
So do you really need to build 700 people? If you had 10 who were making 7,000 a month, just, just say it took you a year and you got 10 who are making 7,000 a month. Will you have people make more? Yeah. Will you have people make less? Yeah. But if you just had 10 making 7,000 a month, that's 70,000 in personal commissions and you're making 50%, you're making 35,000 a month. Does that catch your retirement up pretty quick? Does that, does that, does that replace your college uh, job when you graduate from college it, it, or does that pay your student debt off? It doesn't take much. It doesn't take many. It takes pros. It takes being a pro and attracting pros, being a pro and attracting pros. It takes not paying attention to all the Facebook noise. It takes not paying attention to all the, well, my person didn't hear this or that or this or that. Yeah, they're not going to hear it because they're not eligible to apply and their screen said declined. Or um, they could they can't link their banks. Why can't they link their banks? I don't know. But Plaid, 95% of the banks link. And if they don't know their credentials, we can't help them. It's like, why can't they go on and use online bill pay? Because they don't know how to log into their online bank. We can't help that. Chase doesn't say, well, sorry, our bill pay sucks. You need to be able to log on. You need to know your password and be able to log in. Then you can use our online bill pay. They don't, they don't blame themselves. They say, hey, write down the password. Write down the account number and link. Now, Plaid doesn't link to uh, um, 100% of the banks. Nobody does. So some aren't eligible to apply. It's sad. It's unfortunate. And Giggle has a different uh, linking in DocuSign, and they link to 94%. And so if some can't apply. We get it. That's why we fish business development pros. It's great that we have that. They're not insignificant. So a lot of people making great money on the Biddy and Giggle clients. It's, it's great. Uh, but we've not had anyone get more than 10 Giggle clients in a month. And our average funding is 11,000 or 1,100. So that would be 11,000 in funding. If you, even if you did have 10 giggles, it's only 11,000 in funding and funded value is only 70% of that 7,000. So you make your, you know, three, 6% of 7,000. It's not like, yes, I'm going to focus on giggle. You're not going to be able to escape a job with giggle. You're not going to be able to escape a job even with Biddy. Now, you may have a thousand agents who all get one client and Biddy good. That can add up. But where you're going to do your best is being in business development yourself and having a team of other pros who are in the big, breezy, bigger funding. That's where we shine and that's where your income can be quite, quite strong. All right. So now this may not be for you. You may go, no, I totally was under a different impression and I just want to go out and get, you know, lead with DoorDash. OK, you can still do that, but I'm not going to be, you know. Uh, BS you and tell you, oh, you're going to go get 700 clients a month and each one's 700 bucks. You're going to do 490,000 and or whatever that ends up being. You, it, it, we've not seen it yet, but we have seen a lot of people who can do this. Our average funding on Bank Breezy Bigger is $40,000. So even if you had to get 2.5 clients a month, average clients, and that takes into account a lot of $9,000 clients, so the average is 40. There's a lot at nine and 10 and 14 and 18 because their revenue doesn't qualify for more. You know, there's a lot at the higher end too. All right. So this gives you some suggestion, become a business development pro. And if you have any questions on how to do that, bring it to the live zooms. That's why I'm there. That's why I go there myself to answer any questions. God bless you all. Have a good one.